Would you like to expand your skill set as a craftsman and creator? Well, we would like to help. Each episode will be focusing in on a specific technique in blacksmithing, knife making, and beyond that will give you the edge in your work. This is your edge. Welcome back to Your Edge. I'm Rick. I'm going to be doing a series of videos on casting, all the way from simplistic techniques to more advanced ones. Our first project is going to be a Viking Thor's hammer. For our first project, this is something very simple that you can do. It really involves using pretty simple tools and readily available materials. The mold that we're going to use to cast our Thor's hammer is made out of soapstone. It's a really soft material, very easy to carve, and pretty easy to get a hold of. Using carving tools, just the ones you can purchase at a hardware store or a hobby shop. You lay out a design on your, uh, on your soapstone and just literally just start carving it out. It's as simple as that. Soapstone is very heat resistant. Um, you do have to make sure that the material has been thoroughly dried. Uh, you can put it in an oven at about 350 degrees for several hours. That'll make sure that there's no liquid or no water inside of it. The last thing you want to have is to pour molten material into a wet mold. It's going to cause the material to explode back out. That's a bad thing. But let's get started on showing you how we're going to take a piece of soapstone and create a mold for a Viking Thor's hammer. I'm going to begin taking a scribe and I'm just going to lay out a basic line shape for our Thor's hammer. Um, now this is just to mark it off. This isn't going to actually begin to carve the material out. Once you begin to carve the material, if you're going to use something like a rotary tool or a Dremel or something like that, uh, please wear a respirator. Uh, soapstone is in, essentially it's talc. You don't want to be inhaling that. And of course, safety glasses as always. All right, here we go. So what I'm doing is I'm just laying in a small groove that's going to give me my defining line that I'm starting off with for the body or the central piece of the Thor's hammer. It's going to provide a little channel for my carving tool to begin to score and abrade and cut out some of the material. Soapstone is really soft, it's very easy to carve, so it doesn't take a whole lot of effort. You always want to be careful keeping your fingers out of the direction of the way you're cutting or carving. Never want to carve towards yourself, always away. So now I'm taking a gouge, which is a type of curved carving tool. It has like a little V-shape in it. It's going to help me to begin to cut a groove into the soapstone. vein of harder material in it. So I'm going to switch to this heavier gouge. And just sort of rock it back and forth gently. Just helps remove some material. You don't want to be too aggressive with it because you'll begin to chip the edges. You don't want to do that so much as just gently sort of try to glide through the material. And because this is a natural stone, it, you will sometimes encounter a little bit of denser portions of it. You just have to be patient and kind of work through. It's not going to be anything that's really going to stop you. I mean, it dulls your tools. Uh, if it dulls the tools a little bit, you can go in, have like a little sharpening stone right beside you. I usually keep one with me just to kind of brush up, uh, sort of touch up the edges on my tools and resharpen them as I go. I'm going to use my small gouge back in here again now that I've cleared out some of the more difficult material. That was a little dense and kind of hard to get through there. 
Now it's really starting to go pretty nicely. I can feel it just kind of gliding through the material. So you can see how I'm beginning to form the shape of our Thor's hammer. Here, I have one that I've already completed. Now, as you can see, this doesn't really closely resemble the finished Thor's hammer. There's gonna be a lot of manipulation of the metal afterwards. Basically, what we're doing is just making a thick, solid shape that's roughly in the form of the hammer after we cast the molten metal down into this channel that you see that I've cut there, let it cool, pop it out, and then we're gonna to begin to hammer it down to the flattened form that you see here. Now here's an original. This was uncovered in Latvia. It dates from about the 10th century. You can see where it's thicker up towards the top. A hole had been drilled through, and you can see where it's been hammered very thin towards the edge here to really give it its form, its hammer shape that broadens and kind of gives it better definition in the form of Thor's hammer. And it was later chiseled and adorned with small little shapes. Sometimes they use little dots, dashes. Pretty much that's how they decorated them. They weren't super fancy, some were, but for the most part, this is what you saw. So now that our soapstone mold is finished, it's off to the next phase, which is casting. Now for the metal to cast this, I've chosen some sterling silver that I had laying around, just had a few scraps. But for a beginner, it might be better to use something such as pewter. It has a lower melting temperature, it's much easier to work with. Now before you pour any metal into the mold, a very critical stage is to make sure you preheat it. You can preheat it in a home oven, you can warm it with a torch. It's not going to hurt the soapstone, but it's super critical. The reason is you want to make sure there is no moisture in the mold that could cause the molten metal to fly back out. We're going to be using oxypropane to melt our metal. If you're doing something like pewter, you could use map gas. You can find that at any local hardware store or a Home Depot. bit of overflow but too much material is better than not enough if you don't have enough to fill the mold you're not going to have a complete casting you can always chisel away the excess or use a saw to remove it the important part is we got a full fill of the mold so let's take a look So I didn't quite get an ideal casting from this one. We have enough material to pour another time. We're going to do a second run. Uh, historically speaking, you might have to maybe do this two or three times before you get one you're happy with. The nice thing about it is you can just clean your metal with a little bit of borax, remelt it, re-pour it. Ideally, you want to use just the right amount of metal in order to do your casting. We had a little bit just in case there was overflow or spill. So you're going to have some flashing sometimes you're going to have to remove with either a file or a jeweler's saw. I've selected a jeweler's saw from the workbench area. I'm going to go ahead and get started here in cutting out the shape of our hammer. <laughs>
saw piercing finished, it's ready for the cold forging phase. What I'm doing here is using the flattened portion of this hammer to sort of smooth out the top surface of the Thor's hammer that I'm going to use as my area that I'm going to cut some detail into with chisels and stamps. I'm just gently working the material, condensing it, pressing it down. At some point, I'm going to have to take the torch and anneal it to prevent it from cracking and splitting. it might begin to form some sharp edges or little pieces I'm gonna to have to take a file and sort of work off as I go. I don't want any portions of it being folded over into an area where later it could form a crack. With our Thor's hammer at full shape, it's now time to begin doing the chisel work. I've laid out a design onto the face of the Thor's hammer using a marker, kind of drawing out where I need to do the work. I have two small punches that I made. They're just mild steel. They don't have to be heat treated because they're only going to be used against soft silver. So they're going to go into it pretty easily. So I'm going to begin the work on it by taking the rounded chisel, the rounded punch here, laying out my circular form and then I'm going to take this chisel, which is my cutting chisel. It's going to give the shape for the triangular pieces that go around the outside of the circles. The reason I'm doing this is it's important to sort of lay out where you need to have the space around the circle. You don't want to box yourself in by making too small of a triangle. Even though I do have a drawing on there, sometimes the chisel may wander a little bit. Uh, your eye tends to pick up on the form a lot easier if you have the first shape already laid out that you need to work around. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on it. With the chiseling finished, it's time to proceed to the last step, which is drilling the hole for the jump ring or lanyard. In order to drill the hole for the lanyard, you can use a small drill like a hand drill, uh, like a small power drill, a cordless, or what I'm going to use, this little pin drill. 
You can find a similar version to this at a lot of different hobby shops that are around. Uh, they use them for making anything from model trains to model airplanes. Works really well for this type of small project. I'm going to use a press punch before I begin drilling. It's going to place a small divot. It's going to prevent the drill bit from skating around and possibly drilling it off center, which we don't want. So we've taken you through the entire process of creating a soapstone mold to casting and final finishing of the product. So you too can create your own Thor's hammer. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of Your Edge. If you liked what you saw, please give us a like. And down in the comments section, let us know if there's any projects that you would like to see come to life. And remember, keep honing your edge. If you enjoyed this and want to see some more of our content, here's two great choices. Also, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>